Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to do my April TBR. A lot of the things that I'm going to read this month and for the foreseeable future I do not have physical copies for because I don't have access to my library and it's tearing me apart. It's tearing me apart and I'm with you. I thought that it'd be fun to just tell you what I'm thinking about reading. I might come at you with like another TBR in 15 days just because the turnover has been real over here. I've been reading a lot. So let's look at my handy dandy April spread to see the things that I'm thinking about reading this month. Um, I'll show you some of them on my phone, I'll show you some of them in physical copy, just depends on how I have them. The things that I'm going to talk about I think I'm mostly going to do in order of importance. Right now I am almost done and hope to finish in the first maybe day of April. Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe. This is a book about the troubles in Ireland um, during kind of like the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It's following a murder but tangentially. I honestly have had a lot of troubles, <laughs> no pun intended, reading this book because I just thought that it was going to be something else. I thought that it was going to be a lot more gripping than it has been so far and I put it in my nonfiction five star TBR prediction video and I can tell you already, it's not getting five stars for me. So hopefully I will finish that one very soon. The other book that I have on here that I need to finish relatively soon, I only have 15 days remaining, is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. I did read Lily King's previous novel that focuses on anthropologists. Um, what is it called? Euphoria. Yes, I read that book probably when it came out. And I liked it, but I didn't love it. I've heard, however, many good things about Writers and Lovers, so I'm going to get into it and I'm excited about it. Then I also would like to listen to Severance. Can you even see that? I don't think you can. There you go. Severance by Ling Ma. I've been hearing quite a lot about this recently. I heard about it on Alex's channel at What Page Are You On? And I heard about it Sabrina's channel over at Bookish Sabrina. Just as a book that talks about loneliness um, during a pandemic, which I don't know if it's a great thing to listen to right now, but I do like that it's a nice short book. I love the cover too. That pink. That pink is everything. I also would like to listen to Blackbird Girls, which is a new release and it focuses on the Chernobyl nuclear disaster and like two friends that shouldn't be friends. It seems like it's going to be a little bit heavier, so maybe for older middle school kids, but I am excited about that one. Then I also would like a book that I've been waiting for for many, many weeks and has finally come on hold for me, Green Glass House, which is a mystery that was very highly recommended in all of the middle grade March videos that I watched of people who are recommending mysteries and on people's TBRs. I honestly don't don't know much about it other than it's a mystery and that's as much information as I need. I also would like to read, of course it's the book on the bottom of the stack. Most likely I have the audiobook, it just came in a couple days ago, so I will listen to it mostly and then I'll follow along the book. This follows four friends and supposedly one of them is going to be the next president of the United States. So I'm just looking for like a nice feminist utopia in these trying times and I'm hoping that this is just like lighthearted and friendship focused girls doing their best and rising to the top. I would also like to read the I Survived graphic novel which is a book that I suggested my library buy and they never did and then we closed so alas here I am because the library is now closed reading it in graphic form on ebook. So I'll probably read it on my fiance's tablet because it looks a lot better on his tablet than on the computer or my phone. It is a struggle reading e-comics in this pandemic. I know those are really hashtag first world problems but that is honestly my thought about it so far. I would like to read a nonfiction book called Cattail, The Wild Weird Battle to Save the Florida Panther by Craig Pittman. I read Craig Pittman's other book, Oh Florida, and it was a delightful, funny read. As someone who misses her home state of Florida, I love reading his stuff. He is a reporter and he has lots of other books. What I like most about his books is that they are written for the average person. They're not like historical tales that are super dry and boring. Like he makes jokes in his books and that makes me happy. So this is going to look into the Florida Panther, how they almost went into extinction and how they came back. I requested that my library buy the audiobook, so we'll see if they do that. If they do that, then I'll listen and read. If not, I'll read the book because I did read maybe like 20 pages so far and it is easy enough to keep going just the physical text. What's next? I have a few things from um, Libro FM that I haven't gotten to and I need to. They'll come out with their April list and then I'll need to get to those. So I need to get 
with the program. <laughs> but one of them is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. I haven't read any Emily St. John Mandel since Station Eleven. I've heard kind of mixed things about this. It's not as good as Station Eleven. Even though I personally didn't love Station Eleven, I really enjoyed kind of the world that was created, but I just didn't think that the ending was as, as satisfying as I wanted it to be. I'm going into this ready to go. I'm, I don't have any real expectations. I'm not wanting it to be any one way. I did see that Mightiness at My Name is Mightiness is doing a book club for this book for April, so that could be fun as well. That's on my mind. Another Libro FM book that I have is a middle grade one, and it's King and the Dragonflies. I've heard really fantastic things about this one. This one is by Kaysen Callender. I've even heard people talking about that this could be up there for the Newberry, so I'm gonna give it a shot to see what I think. Um, from my understanding, it has to deal with going through grief, and I feel like there's some LGBTQ themes, but I'm not sure. But yes, there is. Then I have a true crime book, which I haven't heard great, great things about, but I'm willing to give it a shot. That is Gone at Midnight. This is by Jake Anderson, and it looks into the disappearance of someone from 2013. She checked into a hotel in LA and then kind of like disappeared into thin air. It's looking at that, but what I've heard about it is that it kind of is the author talking about his own experience, thinking about this, kind of imposes himself in the book. So, Sometimes that's great and sometimes that doesn't work. And I also have another, not true crime, but thriller, and that is Darling Rose Gold. And this book is by Stephanie Robel. Again, another one that I've seen some people talk about but don't know much about. Sometimes you're just in the mood for a fast-paced, gripping thriller, and I'm hoping that this one will satisfy. I also have one that I saw Chelsea Dollings read. Talk about, I don't think she loved it that much, so I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to read this. And it's The June Boys. It's by Court Stevens. It is a suspense novel. The last suspense thing that I read from Libro FM was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and that one was pretty awesome. So I'm hoping that another one from Libro FM is good in that way as well. So that's it for my list on here. Let's talk about graphic novels and memoirs. So I have The Plain Janes I showed in my last TBR. Still haven't gotten to it. I had Boxers from a while ago but I also picked up Saints right before the library closed and so I have both in the duology so I can read these ones in April hopefully. I also still haven't read Stepping Stones by Lucy Nicely. I'm waiting till I'm really in dire conditions to read this book I feel like. It's coming out in May and I love Lucy nicely but I kind of just want to savor this one and I don't want to read it just yet. And then I also picked up right before the library closed uh, another Maggie Trash book which I haven't read any of her stuff since Honor Girl that I read you know like four years ago, three years ago. This one is called Lost Soul Be at Peace and from my understanding um, it is another biography about her. It says it's mostly about her looking for a lost cat and what that does to her depression and mental health. I really like her style and I'm hoping that I really enjoy this one. That was a very bloody page I think I showed you, so let's show you this one. Another book that I have is The Swallows by Lisa Lutz. I grabbed this one literally the last day we were allowed to be at the library. It's looking into a prep school in New England that has a teacher that is inciting a gender war between the students there. And then the rest of the stack is things that I've shown you before, which I still haven't gotten to. The Taurus Attraction by Sarah Morgan Thaler, Queen of the Sea, which is a graphic novel. Prairie Lotus by Luna Sue Park, which is a middle grade book. Same with these top two ones are middle grade books. I have Genesis Begins Again, which I really want to get to in April. I think it's time for me to stop playing around. And The War I Finally Won by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. That's a deck that you've seen before, so I'm not gonna talk too much about them. I think that is pretty much it for now. I think I will come back at you another time this month with more things that I want to read, especially things that I'm finding on my e-resources because I can't go to the library. So uh, if you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, as always, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.